morning and welcome to worship at first christian church we're glad that you are here i want to share just a few announcements with you you'll find information in your program if you want to follow along or read more details on the back you'll remember that there's a little tear off um, half page for you to register your attendance this morning there's also space for you to um, put any prayer concerns down there and pass those in and i'll give you an opportunity to put some other information on there too in just a moment Today is the last Sunday to buy your Valentines. Um, they, if you forget today or you didn't bring your checkbook, you can probably stop by the office this week. But today is the last Sunday, so get those. Um, you'll support the women's ministry supporting Church World Service, and you'll be able to give a little love to somebody nearby and to somebody far away. Lent will begin in just a couple weeks, and we're going to have a Lenten study. Um, we'll be using the book, The Cup of Our Life, which is a devotional book and will offer opportunities for you to read during the week and then to gather as a group to, um, to share conversation and um, study around that theme. Um, there are copies of the book that are available in the church office. You can also get it on Kindle if that's your preference. But if you want to sign up so we know who's coming to what class in case there are uh, other information that we need to pass along, you can either do that on the tear-off or there's a sign-up sheet in the back as well. Disciples Crossing is our regional church camp, and they're having a work weekend, volunteer weekend, in just a couple weeks, February 28th through, the Mar through March 1st. Our congregation has adopted one of the rooms in Pines Dorm to help finance um, its refurbishment, but this is the week to put, um, put our hands in action. And so if you would like to go for some or all of that weekend, we need to know really today um, so you can come and find me after worship so that we can give them that information by tomorrow. They will provide housing and some meals, and they want to make sure that they have the right amount of resources for that. So if you're interested in more details or you know you're able to go, please see me after worship. Financial Peace begins this Wednesday. Um, information in the program, Baby Palooza, we're collecting new and gently, gently used um, items for babies to give to the Pregnancy Help Center. Um, and next Sunday, we're in for a real treat because Jonathan Salava from Uganda will be here and preaching in both services. Uh, we had a team that got to go to Uganda and visit congregations with him um, last summer. And so he is coming to us and will share good news of the work that um, they are doing there in Uganda. And we will have lunch together because we do not eat enough together. Um, but every time that we do, it is wonderful. So next week, we want to honor him by bringing our best side dishes. Uh, meat will be provided by our um, shepherding group, hospitality group, and, um, and you all are chipping in the rest. So if you have an idea of what kind of your, your go-to best dish is, if you could write that down on your little sheet of paper. Um, and so we'll have all sorts of information we're collecting from you. You can put that in the offering plate later. We just want to make sure that we don't end up with all desserts. As delicious as that would be, um, we want to have some other sides too. So um, if you can put that down, we know what we're going to have. One um, additional announcement that's a change um, from what might be on the calendar, the Men's Fellowship is going to move their meeting until um, Tuesday, February 18th. So it will be a week later than usual, which will give you all the opportunity to have Jonathan Sawaba as um, your guest and speaker um, at that event. So if you can change your calendars, all men are invited to that on the 18th. Friends, we have gathered to worship. Will you stand as you are able for our call to worship? We are called to bring a new understanding of God that God so loves the world. We are the salt of the earth. We are called to bring a new hope in God, that God gives us a new life. We are the light of the world. We are called to follow the commandments and the law. The law of God is love and love. Come, let us be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. And let us love one another with the love of God. Let us join together in our world, God, to worship God, Jesus.
Let us pray. Father God, you have called us to be the light in the shining world. Make us reflect the light of Christ so that people see your love and goodness in our words and actions. You have called us to be the salt of the earth, adding flavor and spice to the world you created. But as salt strings the cuts, stings the cuts of our hands, so may we draw attention to injustice and oppression. You have called us to be faithful to the law and to the commandments. Let us live out our commandments of love to one another as you have shown your great love for us. We ask this through your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forevermore. Amen. I'd like to invite the children to come down and join me for the children's moment. <clears throat> Good morning, how are you all? What did I bring with me today? Salt, right? Do you have one of these sitting on your table? Oh yeah. It, we like sugar a whole lot better than salt, don't we? Sometimes, right? Have you ever mixed them up? That happened once at a little tea party that I was at where we thought it was sugar and it was salt and we put it in and guess what? Did it taste as good? No. No. You don't want salt in your tea, do you? That, a little bit of this can go a long way, right? And you look, I mean, look, it comes out kind of fast. Look how kind, those are tiny, aren't they? How did it taste? Taste all right? You see, just little, little bits of salt. Oh, yep. I know. Not of this kind, but well, let's, look, let's look at this. What is this? Your mom has one of the, yeah. So these are different types of salt from all over the world. Look at them, what, what color's your favorite? Mm, I, think pink. I know there's like a pink one. Who knew that there was, one. it's, it's kind of red. red. Let's see, like Oop, this is the one that I can't read. I can't, I can't tell you where that one's from. But this one, look at this one. This one's from the US and it says Sel de Sauvignon. Who knew, like you like this one too? It does sound like French, doesn't it? We're not going to try all of these right now, but maybe after worship, okay? All right, because these belong to Pastor Jack. Do you know him? You know him, right? I know, so you know him. So maybe he'll let you taste some of these afterwards. The regular one? Well, this is the kind that we just use. All of these are a little different. Do you see how skinny these are? I know, I know. In just a minute, okay? Okay. So let me tell you why I brought this. Because it's not just so we could taste it or look at it, right? Or go, oh, that's kind of cool. It's because in the Bible, Jesus actually said this to his disciples. He said, you are the salt of the earth. You are like salt. How do you think you're like salt? Yeah, you have an idea? Like snow? Yeah. You know, something about snow reminds me of the way we're like salt, too. Because snowflakes, none of them are exactly the same. They're all different. And look at all these different salts. There's different kinds of salts, too, right? So we're kind of like salt in that way, that we're all kind of different. Anybody else have an idea why Jesus would say you're the salt of the earth? What do we know about salt? It's what? Well, it's salty, right? It adds flavor to food, doesn't it? You like to eat it. Add, it makes it taste good, doesn't it? If you, oh, yeah, I do too. Uh huh. So salt adds flavor to the world. Do you think that we can add flavor to the world too? But I, but I feel like people would not like salt on. Yeah. Candy. Oh, 
Do you know that sometimes they even put salt on candy and it makes the sweet sweeter? There, I know, like salted caramel, have you heard of that? It gives flavor, it brings out the flavor in a different way. It's kind of strange, isn't it? Because we don't think about, we don't want salt in our tea or on our candy usually, but sometimes. All right, friends, we're going to say a prayer, and I want you to think about the salt of the earth and, and how we can be salt and add flavor in our own special, unique ways. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thanks for making us salt. Help us add flavor to our friendships, to our families, to our world. For we pray in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you all for coming up, and I invite you to greet the rest of the salt of the earth out there with a handshake or a hug and share Christ's peace.
be seated. We continue our time of worship with prayer as we go to God and share the prayers and concerns of our community. In your program, you will find a list of those um, that we are aware of. I want to lift up uh, Jennifer Heaton Fanning and their family upon the death of her Aunt Lenny, whose funeral service was yesterday. We continue to hold them in our prayers. And want to also offer prayers for Gerald Mendoza, who has some health concerns that are going on in Missouri. Uh, so prayers for him and for his family as well. I invite you to place a hand on the names that are there. Maybe find one that speaks to you as the one that God particularly calls you to pray for this morning. And let us begin with a time of silence as we each come before God in our own way. And then I'll offer a prayer on our behalf. Let us pray. God, through your son Jesus, you told the people that we are the salt of the earth. We are called to add flavor to the world. Kingdom of God flavor so rich that others can taste it in their midst. You call us to share good news, to flavor the world with your love and your peace and your joy. You told us that we are the light of the world, created to shine light before others, not so they can see us, but so that we might reflect your glory and your goodness, so that others might see you through us. Help us to shine hope and love into your world. Shine your light through us. Shine light in the, into the dark places of loneliness, and depression. Shine light into corners of separation and distrust. Shine light onto relationships that are anxious for reconciliation. Shine light, your light. Shine it into our darkness and give us hope for today, hope for tomorrow. We entrust to you those we know who are suffering who are hurting, who are sick, who are healing. We lift up those who are angry or afraid or sad or worried. We remember those who are grieving and the loved ones they have lost. Your presence is our strength. Your presence is our comfort. Your presence brings the peace that we desperately crave. So we pray that you will show us again the kingdom ways, your kingdom ways. Teach us to seek you and your kingdom above all others. May our words and our actions lead others to you and never turn people away from you. For we want to be salt. We want to be light. We want to love and we want to help bring about your kingdom here on earth. We give thanks and pray through Jesus Christ, our teacher and our friend. Amen. Many years ago, John F. Kennedy said, don't ask what you can do for your country, but what don't ask what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. A few years ago, a common saying was, what would Jesus do? Last week, we heard how a small East Texas congregation, you, physically and ec economically banded together and gave thousands of Cubans clean, clear water that they'd never had before. You continue to do what Jesus would do. Thank you. Now let us continue to support our community through our tithes and offerings. Thank you.
pray. Thank you, dear Lord, for these gifts. We ask that you continue to bless our community and our church. And we ask, dear Lord, that you use these gifts to the betterment of your community and to further your work. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our scriptures today come from the book of Isaiah 58:11 and from Matthew 5:13 through 20. From Isaiah, the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. And from Matthew, from the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish, but to fulfill for truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not one letter, not one stroke of a letter will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you join with me in prayer? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of the hearts of all of us gathered here today be acceptable in your sight. You are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. A man walks up to a lunch counter and asks the guy behind the counter if he would give him a free Coke if he shows him something amazing. He agrees, so the guy pulls out a hamster who begins dancing and singing Amazing Grace. That is amazing, says the counterman, and gives the guy his free Coke. If I show you something else amazing, will you give me a sandwich? The guy behind the counter agrees, so the guy pulls out a small piano, the hamster, and a frog. Now the hamster plays the piano while the frog sings a beautiful and moving rendition of what a friend we have in Jesus. The guy behind the counter is completely wowed and gives him a sandwich. Now a man in a suit who's been watching the entire time offers to buy the frog for a princely sum, which the man agrees to. Are you nuts? asks the guy behind the counter. You could have made a fortune off of that frog. Can you keep a secret? asks the man. The hamster's a ventriloquist. <laughs> If a singing frog has lost its voice, it is no longer good for anything but catching flies. Perhaps that's one of the parables that got left out when Matthew was writing down his gospel. Or maybe not. Now this week we return to Matthew's account of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount at the beginning of his ministry. Now most of the time in the gospels when Jesus preaches to large crowds, we do not get to listen to what he is saying. Instead, we witness the actions that go on before, during, or after. The feeding of the 5,000. Jesus welcoming the little children. Jesus getting into a boat to sail to the far side of the Sea of Galilee. Jesus going up to the mountain to pray. Rarely do we hear the actual words of the sermon. But in this instance, we do. Jesus starts out his famous sermon by giving us the Beatitudes, which we heard last week. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. 
Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. After this, he goes right into the scripture we heard today. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Now, most of us, on hearing these words of Scripture, we hear them as commands. We hear them as telling us that we should be meek, that we should be peacemakers, that we should mourn and be poor in spirit. We should be salt of the earth and the light of the world. But Jesus is not actually telling us that. He is not giving us commands or describing what we should be like. Instead, he is telling us what we are. Jesus is describing us. He doesn't say you should be like the salt of the earth. He says you are the salt of the earth. Now, this would have been a much more impactful statement in Jesus' time than it is today. Today, our diets tend to be too high in salt. Doctors tell us to watch our salt intake, avoid really salty foods, try low-sodium alternatives. Too much salt can cause all kinds of health problems, and we get more salt than we really need. Salt has become a bad guy for us. But for people 2,000 years ago, salt had a very different reputation. Salt was used to purify, preserve, and enhance the flavor of food. It was a valuable commodity, and you're probably aware from other sermons on the scripture that Romans even paid their soldiers in salt. That's where we get the word salary from. In fact, some historians argue that civilization itself could not have developed without salt. We would not have been able to preserve food for long voyages or for times between harvests. We would not have been able to survive cold winters or droughts. Humans would have been limited to living in parts of the world where food was able to be grown year-round. Salt has played an important part in our history as human beings. And Jesus is telling us, in his own words, that we are salt. If salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. But how does salt lose its saltiness? Now, I've read many commentaries on this passage which provide plausible explanations for how salt can lose its saltiness, but I think they miss the point. If you have a handful of table salt, there is nothing that you can do to make it lose its salty taste. But it is useless if you don't use it. Salt in a salt shaker helps no one until it is put on food. Salt does nothing until it is used. And what happens when you do use it? If you watch a show like Chopped or Top Chef or any of those cooking shows on TV, you may know that salt brings out the flavor of whatever you put it in. Too much can overpower it, but the right amount takes a dish from bland to amazing. Have you ever eaten food with no salt in it? I did once. I was on a backpacking trip in Boy Scouts and we didn't pack enough salt, so we ran out on the last day. Our last meal on the trail was supposed to be a beef stew made with dehydrated food. Beef, carrots, peas, celery, all of it dehydrated to make it lighter on the trail, and absolutely none of it seasoned. All we had left was pepper. And let me tell you, there is no amount of pepper that you can add to food to make up for a lack of salt. That hike was over 25 years ago, and I could not name more than two of the boys in my troop or even tell you where we were, but I can still recall the taste of the blandest, 
least flavorful meal that I have ever had the misfortune to ingest. Salt makes a difference. It causes change, just as light changes the darkness. A few years ago, I read about a company who is working to push back darkness in the undeveloped portions of the world. The company is called Waka Waka, which comes from the Swahili words meaning shine bright, and it makes solar-powered lights and chargers. The units range in price from $30 to $70, depending on if you just want a light or a light and a charger. There are other companies out there offering similar products, but what makes this company unique is their mission. For every unit that they sell, they send a light to a child in a developing country. These lights take the place of kerosene lanterns that often cause injuries and fires. They bring light to places in the world where artificial light is scarce, but where it means education, security, and hope. They even built a new factory in Haiti after the earthquake to bring in jobs and revenue to an area hit hard by natural disaster. They do not profess to be a Christian company, and yet they are doing more to model Christ's words than many who do. Adding salt changes the flavor of food, just as light changes darkness. Jesus knows what he's doing when he uses these two parables to describe his followers. Once salt has been introduced to food, it can't be taken out again. The change is done. Once light has penetrated darkness, there is nothing else the darkness can do. There is no amount of darkness that can push back the light. We are that salt. We are that light. As followers of Jesus, we have been touched by something that has fundamentally changed us from what we were into what we are. And now we are called to bring that change in others. You are salt. You are light. You have within you the ability to change the world, to share with others the transforming power of Jesus. Light that is hidden in a, under a bushel helps no one. Salt that is left in the shaker is useless. You are neither. Let your light shine and your salt flavor the world. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we hear these words of Jesus, they speak to us today. We are the salt of the earth. We have been called to go and to use our ability to change the world, to go out, to be useful. We are the light of the world. We have been called to shine in the dark places, to expose the darkness and to push it back. We cannot change who we are. We cannot undo what you have done. For when we become your followers, we are changed. We are called to go, to flavor the world, to bring hope and light in all places. God, help us to go and do so. It's in your Son's most holy and precious name that we pray. Amen.
Each Sunday we gather around this table. We gather with these elements. These elements that like the salt and the light, that change things, that bring about a new way of looking at things. When we partake of these elements, we are opening ourselves up to Jesus. We are being changed in a fundamental way. And so as we gather around this table, as we share this meal with those around us, with people around the world, we are reminded of the great gift that we have been given. And we remember that night when Jesus was with his disciples, when he took the bread and having blessed it, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, take, eat all of you, this is my body, broken for you. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and having blessed it, he gave it to them, saying, take, drink, all of you, this cup is my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sin in the new covenant. As often as you come together to eat this bread and drink this cup, do so in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Eternal and loving God, who has given us your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Lord and Savior, you do not turn us away, but hear the concerns of our hearts. You have called us into fellowship on this first day of the week. You are the creator of all that gives life. Help us find in this simple loaf and cup those things which call to our remembrance the risen Lord. Give us here the spiritual food which we need for the coming week. About this table may we feel the presence of Christ's loving power. May we forget for the time being all those things which would divert our attention from you. Help us receive the bread and cup with genuine gratitude. In the name of Jesus, amen. We are all invited to partake of this meal. You may take a piece of bread or one of the gluten-free wafers as the, the plates are passed, and then take a cup as well and share with your neighbors.
Every Sunday here at First Christian Church, we extend an opportunity for any who are looking to join with us to come forward and do so through transfer of membership from another congregation or through confession of faith in Jesus Christ for the first time. We also invite our members to examine how you can continue to dedicate yourselves to the work of God in this church and in this community. Let us stand as we sing our hymn of invitation and dedication. May our Christian living be a light to those who live in darkness. May our Christian communities be cities of light to be seen from afar as signs that God lives and works in all of his people. Go now and let the light of Christ shine on all those who live around you. Amen. Amen. 